Hello, my name is Elaine Husney. I'm a rheumatologist at the Cleveland Clinic. It's a pleasure to introduce Dr. Abrar Qureshi, who is both a dear friend and a colleague who I have known for many years, first as a resident at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, and then as colleagues as we were both on staff at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Dr. Qureshi is the Vice Chair of Dermatology at Brigham and Women's Hospital. He's Associate Professor of Dermatology at Harvard Medical School. He has a broad range of research interests as an epidemiologist, not only in the field of psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, but also in skin cancer biology. He has been working very closely with rheumatologists in the co-management of psoriatic diseases. Dr. Kreshi and I have developed the first dermatology-rheumatology clinic, a combined clinic at Brigham and Women's Hospital back in 2005. The clinic is still in existence today. He will review with us a detailed case on the emerging topic of obesity and metabolic syndrome in patients with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. Hello, this is Abrar Qureshi. I'm a dermatologist at uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'm happy to share with you our experiences in managing patients with psoriasis uh, who also um, have concomitant obesity uh, and or metabolic syndrome. Um, the first case is, uh, is that of a young man who is in his 20s, um, a 27-year-old who presents to our clinic with um, uh, quite severe psoriasis. He has almost a uh, 45 to 50 percent body surface area involved. Um, and uh, in addition to that, he weighs about 430 pounds. Um, the plaques are characterized by um, erythema, which is quite bright red. He has um, uh, overlying micaceous or thick scale. Um, we sometimes call it uh, ostracious scale. Um, and some of the plaques have been excoriated um, or uh, scratched as well where he has bleeding points. If you take a close look at his hands, he has uh, involvement of the left hand, uh, whereas the right hand uh, is completely within normal limits. What you notice is um, uh, swelling of his MCPs um, where he has a lot of um, the shiny skin change because of the edema there uh, and uh, shortening of his uh, left uh, uh, third digit as well as his left uh, second digit. Uh, he has some nail changes on the uh, left thumb as well as the, uh, uh, the left uh, third digit. Um, the rest of his skin disease is quite uh, striking as well. He has uh, involvement of the back. Um, there's a classic uh, image of the umbilicus where his involvement with his psoriasis plaques. These are uh, plain films of his hands. I'm not a rheumatologist, so, uh, but I'll, I'll just describe to you the, the changes that are, are seen here. Uh, he has uh, a destruction of the uh, basically the uh, DIP and PIP joints and telescoping deformity of the left uh, third uh, digit as well as the, um, the thumb on the left side, um, which is really uh, debilitating for him because it is affecting his opposable grip. There's a close-up image of his feet. Uh, he's bearing most of his weight, uh, as you can tell in the next image, on his right foot. Uh, all 430 pounds, and so that foot is uh, is also now in pain. He's got his, his toes have been splayed open to try and balance his, his weight. Uh, he, it's difficult for him to ambulate. He has sausage digits or dactylitis of almost all his toes, and you can begin to see nail changes uh, at this um, on this image where he has uh, pitting and oligolysis and dystrophy of the nails of his left foot, but um, the nails are quite normal on the uh, on the right foot. This is an image of his feet. You can see uh, pencil cup deformities across the board in all uh, five MTPs, as well as severe destruction of the, uh, the distal phalanges um, of the toes of that left foot, whereas the right foot is completely within normal limits. Another uh, close-up image, another image uh, of his uh, feet. So the question is, what would you do for a gentleman um, uh, like this? He's young, um, uh, and what is your treatment choice? Uh, just to give you a little background on him, he um, has in the past uh, smoked. Uh, he currently um, has quit smoking, um, does not drink much in the way of alcohol, occasional beer uh, on the weekends. Um, he is not unable to exercise, and he's laid off from work uh, as well because he's unable to um, stand for long hours in any um, job that he's, he is capable of doing. Uh, and so he is essentially on disability um, at home, uh, difficult to ambulate, cannot exercise, uh, gaining weight, um, has not been diagnosed with high blood pressure or diabetes, but that runs in his family. And so he, he comes to you with, uh, asking for help. Um, the question is, what do you do? 
So although we'll talk a little bit about managing a skin disease, the question is what do you do about um, a gentleman in this situation uh, with his obesity and his overall um, uh, body habit habitus as well. In terms of treatment choice, uh, certainly topical steroids um, are on the cards. Uh, we tend to use class one topical steroids such as clobetasol ointment and or um, beta-methadone dipropionate ointment in combination with dovinex or calcipotrine, which is a vitamin D analog. Um, certainly narrowband UVB or PUVA, uh, which is sorlin plus UVA can be considered, but in a patient like this who has severe psoriatic arthritis mutilans, uh, they would be on systemic therapy anyway. And uh, although the narrowband UVB would help, uh, the skin disease would certainly not treat the arthritis. Acetretin, which is a retinoid, uh, certainly can um, help um, his psoriasis, uh, but monotherapy probably would not be able to control his skin disease on its own uh, and has no efficacy uh, in um, uh, the inflammatory arthritis realm. Um, NSAIDs um, can be used for um, symptomatic relief but will not prevent any further destruction of his joints. Arava or um the data on psoriasis is limited and suggests that the drug does not really work very well, uh, even at the higher doses of upwards of 40 milligrams a day. Um, methotrexate is uh, certainly a possibility um, for skin disease, either orally administered or subcutaneously, and maybe a good choice for his arthritis, although the rheumatologist would make would be uh, the, the best judge of what to do in terms of his uh, mute land. Um, but in his case, he was started on anti-TNF therapy with a Tanercept um, early on, 50 milligrams twice a week, and he actually did very well. Certainly combination therapy with methotrexate plus anti-TNF therapy can be considered. Uh, so he was started on a Tanercept, 50 milligrams twice a week. His skin began to clear, but he was... Um, uh, you know, and able to walk within a, a few weeks. And um, uh, because of mood instability, he was given bupropion. Uh, he also discontinued the Tanercept after a nervous breakdown, and then he came in with uh, essentially a pustular psoriasis flare. We, we're not sure even to this date uh, whether the pustular psoriasis flare was because of uh, the Wellbutrin or bupropion he was started on or whether it was because he, was self, he had self-discontinued his anti-TNF agent but he required admission to the hospital at the time, um, uh, IV um, uh, steroids. Uh, we restarted his Tanner step, and he was discharged about 10 days later, uh, clearing rapidly. Uh, I just put this slide in to ask you the question, what would you do in terms of uh, diagnosis and therapy? Pustular psoriasis has been reported um, as a withdrawal flare, typically, typically from steroid use in patients who have been given oral steroids for control of the psoriatic arthritis or inflammatory bowel disease or asthma if they have that, um, in which case we tend to use, um, uh, you know, either systemic acid threatened therapy or cyclosporin or systemic steroids rarely in these people to calm them down. We certainly have begun to use anti TNF therapy as well for posterior psoriasis flares. In particular, IV infliximab seems to have excellent efficacy uh, for this kind of a reaction. So this gentleman, this is what he looks like uh, a few years uh, into therapy. His... Um, uh, hands have done very well. He has less edema and swelling of his left, digit, uh, left hand. That left third digit, the nail uh, has become normal as well, and he does have an opposable grip now. He's able to make a fist comfortably, although he still has long-standing pain from uh, permanent destruction of the joints of that uh, left foot. He's able to bear weight on both feet now, uh, which has allowed him to reduce the, uh, the stress on his right foot, right knee, and right hip, but he still has... Uh, quite a bit of pain in, in, on the left foot. So uh, we're talking about obesity and psoriasis. It, it, it behooves us to um, spend a little bit of time discussing uh, the latest data in this area. Um, psoriasis tends, again, to be more severe in individuals who are obese uh, compared to those who are not obese. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, uh, the initial case report suggested that patients who actually went through weight uh, reduction or weight loss uh, programs, both either through diet control um, and or bariatric surgery that um, their psoriasis actually resolved. And we uh, anecdotally have had about um, a little less than a dozen patients at our center who've gone through bariatric surgery have completely cleared um, their psoriasis or at least have come off their uh, systemic agent because they do not require systemic therapy as their psoriasis extent has, um, has been reduced to a few plaques on, on a particular limb, for example. Um, the question really is, can obesity be a risk factor for psoriasis or psoriasis severity? And, and you know, um, 
is it the cart or the horse? Does psoriasis um, come before the obesity? Are people with psoriasis sedentary because they're uh, conscious of their skin, uh, aren't working out, um, and not going to a gym, not going to a swimming pool, and hence, um, uh, you know, gaining weight? Or is there something else um, in this scenario um, where uh, obesity precedes the onset of psoriasis? So a few years ago, we did this um, did some work in this area, and um, what we essentially found, um, I'm showing you data from the uh, st study done in the nurse Nurses' Health Study 2 out of the uh, Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard School of Public Health, where uh, women who had um, their body mass index and a number of other um, weight-related measures recorded years ago uh, were uh, followed prospectively in this prospective cohort, cohort study. Um, and we found essentially that uh, women who had a body mass index, um, let's say more than 35, um, had about a more than a two and a half fold higher risk of developing psoriasis later on in life. Um, we also looked at baseline BMI, and then we looked at base, um, body mass index at age 18. And if you look at the data on uh, body mass body mass index at age 18, if the BMI was uh, more than 30, more than equal to 30 the risk of uh, future psoriasis was at least 70%, so um, relative risk of 1.73. Uh, so this was the first publication uh, back in um, 2007 that suggested that uh, individuals who uh, had developed psoriasis were, um, were obese, and obesity uh, preceded psoriasis onset. Um, since then, we've done some uh, further work in the area. We've looked at obesity and risk of psoriatic arthritis, um, and uh, this data suggests that individuals whose uh, body mass index was more than um, uh, 35 had uh, almost a three-fold increased risk of developing um, psoriatic arthritis later on in life. Um, this is uh, after multivariate adjustment uh, for other known risk factors, including smoking, alcohol intake, and physical activity. And so it's quite striking um, that uh, there seems to be a link between obesity and psoriasis and obesity and psoriatic arthritis. Um, uh, certainly, you know, if obesity is implicated, um, so is uh, diabetes. Uh, initial cross-sectional studies have shown an association between psoriasis and type 2 diabetes. Um, the relative risk seems to be in the uh, about 10 to 60 percent uh, range, depending on the severity of the psoriasis. Uh, but what's interesting is that um, uh, if, the, if the patients are, are less than age 50, uh, diabetes uh, seems to be more prevalent. Um, and then, you know, our group looked at this carefully as well um, in uh, the nurses' health study, and we found that um, the relative risk of, uh, of uh, diabetes in, in, in women who had um, psoriasis was in the 60% in the, uh, range. So uh, the relative risk was 1.63, uh, and this is after multivariate adjustment. So suggesting that psoriasis certainly is a risk factor for uh, later on to diabetes. And so the, as the story develops, um, I just told you earlier that obesity seems to precede psoriasis, and then um, diabetes is preceded by, psori uh, by psoriasis. So it's certainly possible that obesity leads to psoriasis that then is linked to uh, diabetes. The 60% increased risk of diabetes um, is independent of body mass index or waist hip ratio or any other uh, indicator or marker of obesity. So this seems to be a risk above and beyond um, simply obesity. And then more recently, we've done some further work in, in um, three large cohort studies, Nurses Health Study 1, Nurses Health Study 2, and a study of men in the health professionals follow-up study. We found a very similar result um, between the, uh, the age-adjusted relative risk was 1.69, but the multivariate risk was in the 25% range, 26% range. So 26% uh, increased risk of um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, among women and men in the United States who had psoriasis. So how do we, how do we use this data and how do we um, uh, take a case like this and apply uh, what we've learned to uh, the clinic? Well, at least in our clinical setting, when patients come in with psoriasis, um, um, they are, uh, you know, certainly vitals are taken, but we also um, get, get a BMI um, on every single patient who is examined. Um, they are screened for inflammatory arthritis, of course. Uh, but we are beginning to uh, recommend that their primary care doctors check their fasting lipids, um, or we will do that for them, as well as a CRP. And the question is, do they need a statin? Um, if we do draw blood on them, we'll also check fasting sugars and uh, hemoglobin A1C. 
And then depending on the patient, if they have a body mass, mass index above 35, we will recommend a dietary consult, a nutrition consult, as well as enrollment in a weight loss program. Uh, we do talk to them about so smoking cessation and alcohol intake as well, particularly high, high caloric um, uh, alcohol, including uh, non-light beer. Um, and of course, depending on the patient, we'll refer them for um, physical activity uh, slash physical therapy as well as a dental workup. Um, in general, these patients tend to do very well uh, with uh, you know, concomitant weight loss program and counseling, uh, especially if they are at risk for developing diabetes or have a borderline uh, hemoglobin A1C, where the diet control helps um, not only their psoriasis, but also helps their um, uh, uh, risk for type 2 diabetes and, and brings their uh, hemoglobin A1C to within normal limits just on diet control rather than uh, uh, need for uh, therapy for that type 2 diabetes. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we've had a success with a few patients, um, about in nine patients now, who had uh, undergone bariatric surgery. And the, bariatric, the, the gastric bypass surgery was performed uh, not for the psoriasis, but for other reasons, for other health-related reasons. These patients um, happened to have severe psoriasis, um, had been on systemic therapy, either with uh, methotrexate and or other anti-TNF agents for psoriasis and, and or psoriatic arthritis. And um, in all these patients, um, after they had uh, precipitously lost, um, you know, for the, in, the, in the typical examples, more than 100 to 150 pounds of weight, their need for systemic therapy has diminished, and they're not on systemic therapy um, anymore. They do come in for, for topical therapy and for annual checks, but they're all doing quite well. Um, some of them have, have had complications from the bariatric surgery, but the psoriasis has done quite well. So, in summary, um, we certainly are seeing patients with psoriasis, um, especially those with severe psoriasis who tend to have um, uh, a body mass index typically above 30 or 35, the example of this young man that we discussed today. Um, and certainly there's enough epidemiologic data out there to, to link obesity with psoriasis, suggesting that obesity does precede psoriasis, and hence there might be a, a pathophysiologic mechanism here whereby individuals with psoriasis um, who develop more worsening of their disease uh, may, may indeed be uh, linked to their obesity, and so it behooves us to advise our patients not just um, to be compliant or adherent to their treatment that's prescribed to them for their skin disease and or their arthritis, but to also focus on, on losing weight. Uh, and here's another reason for them to exercise and control their diet. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kreshi, for a wonderful synthesis of a case study and its relationship to a rather new concept of literature on the relationship between psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis in regards to excess weight. We have learned that obesity can promote and complicate the management of psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. The need for closer monitoring um, in the development of cardiovascular risk factors as well as metabolic syndrome as well as treatment initiation in a more timely manner to help prevent or mitigate some of these cardiovascular risks, as well as the importance of knowing your BMI um, in your patients uh, and further risk factor analysis. We really look forward to having you join us in our next future RHR activities. Thank you.